Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and today I'm going to share a page that I'm creating in my interleaved Bible. Interleaved means every other page is blank, and if you're somebody who is really worried about interacting with the pages and the words of Scripture, an interleaved Bible might save you that panic. And I have already started pressing some leaves for today's piece inside my Bible. I wouldn't rec recommend it necessarily. I'd probably go get a phone book because these did leave a little moisture in the book, not ruining any pages, but they made a few of them a little bit on the lumpy side. But the verse I'm going to be doing, or the chapter that I'm going to be doing, is the short chapter of Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. That's the entirety of Psalm 100. And in this Bible, it's in that spot in particular. And I'm going to do a full double page spread with leaves. And you can do a little section of a page, you can do just a column, you can do whatever you want. But I thought I will show you a double page spread because I love that splash of color when I pass through my Bible and I'm looking for something, it's really easy to find. So I'm going to use my Gensai Tambi paints. I haven't used these very much lately, but I suddenly had the thought I needed to put that yellow in there that I purchased to fill in the yellow that I had lost. You can buy these paints by single pans. So if you don't want all the colors, you can just buy one of them. But the reason that I wanted to get it out is because I'm using this background technique a lot lately. I just like having all that color with the baby wipe. Well, the baby wipe fits really perfectly into one of these giant pans. The pans are really big, so I can just stick it in there, especially after having sprayed it with water so that it kind of gets the paint moving. And it makes it really easy to do something like this. So I'm going to use all yellows and reds and oranges because this is a Thanksgiving page. And I thought it was appropriate with Thanksgiving coming up. But you could also do the same kind of a thing with flowers. You can do it, you know, with spring type leaves. So you can do it with greens. Uh, there's lots of different things that you're going to be able to get from this video. So I hope this is helpful. So I'm putting down random bits of different colors and different strengths of colors. Some of them are going to be deeper and richer and some of them lighter. And I'm keeping the ones that are on the scriptures the, the most light or, you know, the, the, the least difference, the least contrast between colors, because that's going to keep them more readable. But I can put some dark color around the outside edges if I want. And on the right hand side, there's nothing interfering with it. I can put as much color on there as I want to. And none of this color is going to bleed through. Almost all watercolors are fine for Bible journaling. They're not going to bleed. You'll get a little haze coming through the other side, but not any major bleeding that's going to keep you from being able to read the other side or anything like that. So I've got some strong color in some areas. And then if you have some areas where you got too much color, I can go in and wipe out a little bit if there's any areas where I think there's a word that's not readable. So you can still adjust your watercolor at this point. I put a piece of computer paper over top of it and got a hot iron. It's on the hot cotton setting, no steam, and just iron the page. It's never going to get 100% perfect flat. Just know that, but it's going to be really close, so your page is going to be workable. I've taken out the paper sheets that I had underneath of them for now, just because it's going to be easier for you to see what I'm doing. And I've got watercolor pencils ready. These are my Albrecht Durer pencils, but you can use any watercolor pencils to start tracing leaves. And I'm setting this particular leaf right over the verse because I wanted to have a bright yellow leaf on that spot. And then I'm going to start just putting leaves in different places across the whole spread. And you can make them as big, as small as you want, whatever size you want. If you have die cuts, you can do this with die cuts. You don't have to do it with real leaves, but real leaves are outside. So you can try that. You can do all different kinds of shapes. And I'm layering them on top of each other too. I'm not worried about them crisscrossing each other or anything and trying to make some interesting shapes out of them. And 
you, there's not a lot that you can see here, but it will start to appear because what I'm going to do is take the watercolor pencil, go around the outside edge of the shape. So I'm basically doing negative coloring around the outside edge and I'm just scribbling it. So don't feel like you have to be super perfect with this because again, we're going to use that baby wipe and it's not going to be a real exact science. We're just looking for a general shape of that leaf. So it feels like you've got a, a leaf shape underway. And with the baby wipe, I just got my finger kind of shoved down inside of it so I can try to get it as pointed as possible to control where that, that color is moving. And here's a little closer look. I'm tapping and sliding the baby wipe at the same time. So I'm kind of moving it and getting some texture because the tapping will give you a little bit of the texture. So there is a leaf. I mean, how easy was that to just create something that looks like the beginning of a leaf. Now I wanted some of those edges to disappear. I didn't want it to look like there were pencil lines. So I'm just kind of lightly going over them with a clean portion of the baby wipe um, just to break them up so they're not super hard edges all over the place. And then I'll do the same thing for a bunch of the other leaves. And I can pick out a leaf. I'm going to speed this up because we could be here all day. This did take me quite a while to do because I got lost in how beautiful is this was coming out. And I really had a good time with making each one of these leaves kind of start to pop up out of the surface of all this pigment. So all of that, that color serves as a general background and then we're we're trying to create those shapes that make the leaves look like they're popped on top so we're doing negative coloring you could do positive coloring so you could color inside each one of the leaves uh, i think this just happens to be a little bit more beautiful because look how that yellow leaf in the corner just pops out because i put the orange color around it i just think that came out really gorgeous soften the edges and then I can take a darker color. As I, I get more confident, I can go around a few edges and just pick a couple por portions of some of the leaf edges and not all of them. Like don't go all the way around the whole thing and outline it. Just pick a spot here and there to make one little portion just a little bit darker than the others. And especially in here where I've got all this rich red color, I'm gonna need to have that brown be the shadow because the red's not gonna show up in there. And there's a few spots where you can add just a little bit of detail and it starts giving you that impression. This is just a big pile of leaves that are mushing and melting into each other. But all you're doing is doing this around a portion of each one of those leaf outlines that you've created. You can get as detailed or as non-detailed as you want with something like this. And of course it depends. If you're going to do flowers, you can do die cuts and trace flowers on here and do the same kind of thing. I decided to add one positive leaf and I wanted to see how that was going to work on top of everything by using some brown pencil and some green pencil to recreate this leaf in my hand and I'm just recreating portions of it. I'm not just going to do the whole thing solid and see how this works out by just coloring some of that color on top and doing the same technique to just tap the color so that I have some really loose watercolory edges and some of them will be lost and found and disappear a little bit and I wasn't as thrilled with that but what I did like was the idea of bringing in a little bit of green because when you have a pile of leaves you often have just a little bit of green so I'm going to add just little teeny touches of it here and there as if there are some leaves that I'm drawing underneath each one of these leaves that already exists. Just a few shadow areas just to create a little difference in color. It doesn't have to be a lot and I, I chose a lighter happier green than the one that I did in the leaf because I wasn't as thrilled with that leaf as I thought I was going to be. And I'm trying to find some of the leaves that I hadn't done anything with down here in the corner. I hadn't done anything with this particular leaf so I thought I'd add my shading around it using that green and then use my baby wipe again to soften things out so I don't have super hard edges all over the place. And the next step is going to be to brighten everything because I started feeling like it was getting a little bit dark. So I started tapping watercolor from that same watercolor set that I used in the beginning. 
so that I get some bright yellow and bright reds on the very top surface. It's going to maintain the shapes underneath that I already have, but it's going to add that intensity of color. The whole time I was working on this, by the way, was a wonderful time of just thinking about the last year where I was last Thanksgiving and what things have happened to me in this past year that I have to be grateful for. And a, a long page like this, something that takes some time, is a great time to meditate and just think about what the Lord has done for you in the last year and mull over those things in specific. Not your lifetime of things to be grateful for, though they, are, they exist, but what is it he's done for you this year that has been unique and different for this, this past year? And I started writing a few notes along a few of the leaves in a micron pen to just add a little bit of journaling to it. You could certainly add a column of journaling. You could mask out a box and leave yourself space for journaling. There's lots of different ways that you could do that on a page like this. But I hope you'll take some time to create something like this during the Thanksgiving holiday and spend some time really pondering what the Lord has done for you in the last year and what he's blessed you with and what you should recognize because sometimes we forget. Our brains leak and we need to be refilled with thanksgiving and gratitude. And I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful that you came and watched this video and spent a few minutes with me. You can watch some more here or go get busy making your own page. God bless you. Bye-bye.